Historically, stories coming out of the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii are about struggle, adversity, and overcoming obstacles. But 2018 had a different tone, a tone of celebration and thankfulness. After weather forecasts predicted thunderstorms and sea swells strong enough to crush weaker swimmers into shore, athletes woke up to a beautiful sunrise and water so calm that swimmers were eyeing up course records. They can hear your women's professionals on their way. Beyond the weather, the pro field was filled with reasons to celebrate even just stepping onto the Kailua Pier. One year ago, a crash a couple of days before the race saw Tim Don rush to the hospital to have a halo screwed into his skull to save his ability to move his body at all. On race day in Kona last year, Matt Russell crashed through a car window, severing major arteries and he almost lost his life. Female pro Sarah True spent months fighting depression by using Kona as her focus and motivation to keep moving forward. And Meredith Kessler, Liz Blatchford, and Marinda Carfrey all became first-time mothers not knowing how time off and the changed bodies would affect their ability to compete. And even though their stories aren't quite so recent, many other pros consistently credit Iron Man with changing their lives. Lionel Sanders used triathlon to kick drug addiction. Daniela Reef and Cameron Wharf were ready to give up on sports altogether but came to Ironman and found entirely new, record-setting athletic careers. Even Lindsay Corbin, who's raced Kona a record 12 times as a professional, says qualifying for Kona is still a massive motivational driver in her life. Like I said, celebration, thankfulness, and the opportunity for some seriously amazing comeback stories. Unlike last year where Josh Amberger was able to pull away from the field, this year a long, strung out pack formed, which included former elite swimmer USA's Tim O'Donnell, an ITU athlete, Kona rookie, and pre-race favorite eight-time world champion Javier Gomez. Sebastian Keenley, Andrew Starkowitz, and Cameron Worf were just three minutes back of the leaders. Second seed Lionel Sanders underdelivered on his own expectations and had a lot of work ahead of him as he got out of the water six minutes back. The women's race played out very differently than the men's with fan favorite Lucy Charles breaking away from the pack immediately, leaving a huge pack more than three minutes back that included ITU speed swimmer Sarah True. Coming out of the water, Charles had broken the 19-year swim course record by more than 30 seconds, actually getting all the way out of transition before her main competitor, three-time defending champion Daniela Reef had even exited the water. Fans watched and waited, and waited, and waited, until Reef eventually got out of the water a full 10 minutes behind Charles, clocking the worst swim of her career after having been stung by a jellyfish and had struggled just to even keep swimming. But the swim doesn't dictate the race in Kona. Even though Reef was injured and almost 10 minutes back, she's probably the best female biker triathlon has ever seen. As the men got out on the bike, it didn't take long before Worf, Starkowitz, and Amberger took over the lead and created a four minute gap on the field. But in the immediate group behind them were strong runners like Javier Gomez, Braden Curry, and defending champ and run course record holder Patrick Langa all pushing hard to keep the lead cyclist from getting too far away. On the women's bike, Lucy Charles pushed to keep her nine minute lead intact. Daniela Reef had Sarah Crowley desperately trying to hang on to her wheel, but slowly, one section of the course at a time, Reef chipped Charles' lead from 10 minutes down to eight, then six, eventually down to nothing, making a statement that her power on the bike is untouchable. Coming into transition, the once-in-a-generation perfect race weather resulted in the fastest bike times in history. Cam Worf broke the bike course record for the second year in a row going 4.09.36, but the chase group featuring the field's best runners, Bart Arnault, Tim O'Donnell, and Patrick Lange were only four minutes back, and just seconds behind that group was a hungry Kona rookie in Javier Gomez. Daniela Reef also set a new women's bike course record going 4.26, which was more than 18 minutes faster than the previous record. 
Lucy Charles also broke that same record. However, as they started the run, Charles was already a minute 40 down from Reef, who's historically one of the best female runners in the Kona heat. Miles behind were the extremely talented runners in Sarah True, Annie Haug, and Sarah Crowley, but they had upwards of 15 minutes to make up and were likely racing for third. The run course played out exactly as expected. Amidst the heat, hills, and the punishment of Kona's famous lava fields, Daniela Reef and Lucy Charles held steady while Sarah True showed off her speed, Sarah Crowley tried to hold True off, and Annie Haug charged hard from behind. On the men's side, we saw a display of endurance sports performance we may not see again for a very long time. Starting the run from four minutes back, Patrick Langa charged forward, taking the lead from Cameron Wharf at the 10-mile mark. He then extended the lead to one minute, then two, then four, until the clusters of men that started in front of him and behind all faded away, broken by Langa's otherworldly ability to run in that Kona heat. Finish line, Patrick Langa became the first athlete to ever race the Kona Ironman in under eight hours, setting a new course record of 7.52.39. Bart Arnault was four minutes back, placing second, and David McNamee, the sneakiest racer over the last two years in Hawaii, got his second third place finish in a row, going 8.01.09. Daniela Reef had a similar record-breaking day, winning the women's side in 8.26.16, breaking her own course record by more than 20 minutes, and becoming only the third triathlete in history to win four Kona titles in a row. Lucy Charles finished second 10 minutes later, and Annie Haug did exactly what she did in 70.3 Worlds this year, storming through the entire field and making it on the podium in a time of 8.41.58. Every person in the race has a reason to celebrate being there. It's the World Championships. It's the most iconic event our sport has to offer. Qualifying gets harder and harder every year with hundreds of thousands of athletes trying to make it, but only 2,400 getting the coveted spots. But this year was a celebration of sport and of life because on this day, both pros and age groupers ran, walked, rolled, suffered or even hobbled their way across the finish line and every single one of them had a gigantic smile on their face and celebrated what they may have just recently thought that they couldn't have accomplished with their family and friends beside them. And if all of that didn't bring a tear to your eye, race winner Patrick Langa stunned the crowd and his girlfriend when he took a knee and proposed to Julia right there at the finish line. Now the pros almost make Kona look effortless with their superhuman athleticism, but if you really want to get inspired, look no further than the final couple of hours of the day and the party at the Ironman Kona finish line. Some of the most inspiring and emotional moments from Kona happen every year when the average, everyday age groupers finish the race. And it's no exaggeration, the final few hours are an experience like nothing else. The end of the day sees athletes who have been racing for up to 17 hours finally make their way down the chute on Ali'i Drive, getting in just before the cutoff encouraged by hundreds of cheering spectators who came back just for this moment. Race announcer Mike Riley leads the charge, making sure every single athlete gets to hear their name being called. Boys, 
Just ask anyone who's been to the finish line party, it's hard to hold back tears watching those athletes complete the race. Because long after the pros have gone for a shower and a meal and a press conference, the average amateur still has several hours of punishing work ahead. Crowds on the course bring encouragement in the early stages, but once the sun goes down, it gets lonely and athletes are left to grind it out on their own. That's why Mike Riley continuously reminds the finish line crowd to keep the noise level extra high so that while the triathletes still out on the course might not have the finish line in sight, they can hear it from miles away. Those athletes coming in during the final hour this year included a man who was previously 500 pounds and has dropped half his body weight over the past two years. An 86-year-old athlete, multi-time Ironman, and the oldest person to ever cross the finish line at the World Championship in Kona. And there were so many others who gutted it out all day and all night to make it to the end before the cutoff. The final female finisher made it in just under the wire and was in such bad shape, she had to be pulled over the line by Mike Riley. but she still did it. She is, like all of the finishers today, an Iron Man. Until next year, everyone, thank you for following. Congratulations to all the racers out there, and thank you to all the volunteers for making it such a great day. No Hawaii, Mau Kealoha.